Are you looking for a battery to support your kayak trolling motor? Maybe a trolling motor for a small boat or even a dedicated electronics battery? If you are, then Power Queen probably came up in your research at some point. And today we're gonna to talk through the 100 amp hour mini version that they offer today, the Smart Edition. Now we originally did a Power Queen review battery back several years, a couple of that, several years, back in August, 2023. One of the earliest batteries we did on the channel was a Power Queen battery and it performed just fine back then. Today we're talking about their latest and greatest mini battery. What makes a mini battery mini battery? Seems obvious, but there's no standard to a mini battery. So they tend to, to vary in their shape and size. So this one is 10 and a half, 10 and a quarter inches wide, five and a quarter inches deep and just under nine inches tall. So that makes a pretty small package, especially if you're putting this on a size sensitive boat or uh, you know, you're trying to squeeze a battery into an existing place that you know, your boat's already full and you're trying to sneak one in a rod locker or something like that. This one is very small, narrow, and it's able to pack a punch. So especially if you're considering like two of these, let's just say you've got a small tracker or something that came with a 12 volt battery. You wanna convert it to a 24 volt trolling motor. You don't really have the space for it. Here's how it lays out. So you can see two of these take up a lot less real estate. Of course, there's a weight benefit when it comes to a lithium iron phosphate battery. This guy weighs in just about 19 and a half pounds on my scale. If you were to try to get a, if you were to look at one of the batteries you have in your boat, it's probably a group 27, group 31 deep cycle. There's gonna be about 50 pounds in about 50 amp hours. So you're getting under 20 pounds with double the capacity at 100 amp hours, which is fantastic. Let's go ahead and just talk through cycle life for a second. Lithium iron phosphate chemistry batteries. Huge benefit to them is not only weight and the energy density, the depth of discharge, but the cycle life is a big one. So you're able to discharge these batteries several thousand times, depending on your depth of discharge or how far you bring it down. You know, three, four, 5,000 cycles, depending on that, you know, in reasonable use case, you're gonna get a long, long life out of that versus a lead acid's about 250 to 500 cycles. So when you're doing a price comparison of, oh, I can go to Walmart or I can go wherever and get a deep cycle lead acid, just remember that it's not gonna last nearly as long or have the same capacity. Now these batteries all come with really fancy battery management systems now. There was a time where they came with very crude, basic, just basic functions. And now especially these smart additions ones have a lot more going on. So you've got your fundamental, you know, your low voltage protection to make, you, make sure you don't over discharge batteries, your over voltage protection, short circuit protection, over current protection. Um, you also have low temperature charge protection to make sure that you don't try to charge a frozen lithium cell, which is a bad thing. Uh, but this one also has Bluetooth capability. Originally, I wasn't a huge fan of Bluetooth. I didn't really see the value. Now I wouldn't buy one without it. To be perfectly honest with you, there's so many options out there when it comes to Bluetooth, having a good app that connects to your phone. I walk by this boat, I can ping my batteries, see what's going on. Bluetooth capability has really come a long way. It's really nice to be able to see what's going on. Make sure you're not overcharging it. You know, Just make sure, you know what, hey, you know, it's at 80%. I can go fishing another time. I don't have to charge it. Like you're good. And that kind of information is super helpful. It's really quick and easy to set up. You just kind of download the app. You're able to scan the QR code on top. That ties your battery to your phone. Super easy setup and it gets that live feedback of what's going on with your battery. 24 seven, hand, you know, hand, wires free, no battery monitor, no shunt, no Hall effect sensor or anything else to monitor the remaining SOC of your battery. So that's super handy. Now let's touch on charging for just a second. So 100 amp hour battery, typically you wanna charge them at like a 0.2 C charge rate. So 0.2 of 100 amp hour battery is gonna be 20 amps. So that's like where it's most happy. It'll take more than that. It'll take less than that. Uh, I, I don't like to recommend anything less than five amps. You know, five amps is really the bare minimum. If you're buying a charger for this, stick with a 10 amp. And uh, you know what, let me go grab a Power Queen 20 amp charger that goes along with it. Okay, I'm back. So this is the 20 amp hour charger. Slide up, make sure I don't slide off my boat here. 14.6 volt, 20 amp charger. So these are 12.8 volt nominal batteries. You charge them up 14.6, 14.2 plus or minus a few tenths. Uh, plugs into a regular 220 outlet. So here is the charger itself. I've been using it. So it just comes with a regular power adapter, right? That you'd find maybe on your old computer or something like that. Plug it in the wall, you get a status light here. So fully charged standby charging or fault. Has a cooling fan on it, not all of them do. Usually when you go up to like a 20 amp charger, you get a cooling fan. So these still get warm, all chargers get warm. You're converting energy from AC to DC and you're charging a battery. It's gonna get a little warm just doing that. Uh, what I do like about it is it comes with a nice sturdy Anderson connector. 
Some of them just come with alligator clips, which is okay. But if you really want to get serious and you don't want to really mess with it, sometimes the alligator clamps kind of get in the way, they get tangled up, come unhooked, you lose them. But it comes with the Anderson connector, so high amp connection here with uh, M8 ring terminals that are crimped on, ready to rock. So a very nice solution if you're, especially you're a kayak or something, you're, you're not mounting the charger to the boat, you're bringing the charger to the battery. Great option there, a 20 amp charger, fully charge this battery in about five hours. So you can turn and burn with this thing and uh, get it back up and running for you very quickly with the charger. Now with all the batteries we get these days, we do do a capacity test with it. 100 amp hour battery, right? You're trying to run some calculations to see if this is a big enough battery for your application. We tested this at a 10 amp draw after we fully charged it, got 108 amp hours out of this little battery. That is awesome. That is so awesome because, you know, you really don't expect to get everything, right? So if you've got a 100 amp hour battery, you know, maybe you get 93 amp hour, something like that. There was a time where that was normal. And you're getting 108, you're getting 8% more than you really originally signed up for. So as this battery ages, you know, it's gonna age down to 100 amp hours over a couple of years. So you're just really gonna get a lot of value and a lot of life out of these lithium batteries. We also did uh, some other bench testing, which we'll cut over to here in the garage. So the next thing we're going to do is do a little bit of battery testing. I have our manual here that comes with the battery. Just want to make sure that we're familiar with all the different specs that it has, especially as it mentions the battery management system. I already have it synced up to the app. So if you want to see that, it's at 99%. I'm going to try and do a screen record when you do the testing and overlay that over the screen as well. So you can see what I'm seeing here on my phone. So let's take a look at the specs. From a max continuous discharge current, that's what we're gonna be checking here, is 100 amps. So I'm assuming most of these batteries take a little bit more than that, or there's a time delay that it says, you know what, I can take a 1.2 C or 120 amps for 30 seconds before I kick out. Give you a little bit of surge capacity, a little bit of beyond that before it drops out. Um, that kind of depends on the battery. I've had some drop out right at 100. Some of them will go up to 180 for 30 seconds before they drop out and things get pretty warm there. Um, surge discharge current, we will not be testing. That's 500 amps for one second. So that's a lot uh, for 500 amps. I mean, that's a 5C discharge rate for one second. Obviously you wouldn't run into that if you're using this for a trolling motor or you know maybe a surge capacity on a solar setup, but that's gonna be hard to hit. That's really all that we're worried about for this particular test. I've already done the capacity test on this battery. We talked about that. So let's jump over here and take a look at our setup. So here is the setup. We have a uh, Bougie V 2000 watt 12 volt inverter. 2000 watts is well above the 1280 that this battery has, so we'll definitely be able to pull more than one C on it. I have this screen over here is for the inverter. This one is directly to the battery tied to this Hall Effect sensor. This Hall Effect sensor is gonna count all the electrons that come out of the battery this one over here on the left, you'll see a difference in the wattage because there's an efficiency difference between the inverter. The, the inverter itself is gonna consume some power. So we're watching this amps here. This one amp or less than an amp probably is what's running our inverter, keeping it ready to go. That is the setup. This battery, like I said, is 99% charged. Over here, we have two heaters. I think we're only gonna need one. So I've got this one here we're gonna kick on first. If I have to ramp in this one, uh, we most certainly can, but we're gonna start there. Let me get my screen record going. Screen record, three, two, one. There we go, I'm stepping on something. All right, we are ready to do our test. You, you see my screen as it is right here. I'm gonna kick on the fan on low. Okay, so what we're paying attention to is this guy here. 60 amps, let me get my timer going because it's always good to see how long it would go over. So as soon as it hits over 100 amps, I'm gonna start the clock here. And I don't know if I can ramp this in. Oh, there's way over 100 amps right there. 124, 126. Let's see how long it does that. There it is, 10 seconds. All right, so that's exactly what you want to happen when you're testing something like this. You want it to hit that target and then drop out pretty soon. I've had some of these run for like 30 seconds at 180 amps or 200 amps. And these things start to get a little bit crispy when you do that. As with any installation, make sure you have appropriate circuit protection on it. 
for your wiring, not the load. If I've got six gauge wire on it, you need to make sure you have whatever, 60 amp, look it up in the specs. I'm not giving that recommendation. Look it up in the specs. You know, maybe that's a 60 amp breaker. You got eight gauge, you got four gauge, you got two gauge, whatever you're running off this battery, make sure your circuit protection is on par with your wiring. That's the, obviously the key there. You guys probably know that. But uh, so far, our capacity test has been good. As I mentioned, 108 amp hours out of the battery. So capacity wise, you know, double thumbs up on capacity. It's a 100 amp hour battery, getting a lot of power out of this little guy. That's good. Your 100 amp discharge protection kicked in pretty quick, 10 seconds, 120 amps. That's pretty good. I've had some of these push, you know, 180, 200 amps for 30 seconds. And I've talked to some suppliers and I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'm like, but it's a 100 amp BMS. So I don't know how you do that. Anyway, test here went fantastic. No concerns there whatsoever. You saw what the app did. So you can see that, you know, it's giving you that feedback. That's good. The battery kicked itself back on all by itself. So it cooled off, turned itself back on. So if you do short it, you're whatever, you're working in your back of your boat, you cross a wrench or whatever, something kicks out, the battery spooled back up. That's good. You don't have to go do something, plug in a charger or anything like that. I love that. And um, so let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. Like always, I'll have some links down in the description. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel for me and make sure you check out this next video. We'll see you on the next one.